I think uh, you can expect a, a very, very strong rally. And this rally will take longer. I, I can't envision a third world war, everybody fighting, but I think it will more, it will be, we will see a more hybrid war developing where there's more of a financial economic war where gold and silver and other commodities will come into play. We've seen export bans for uh, coming from China for the rare earth. Mm-hmm. And I think this will move prices up. Uh, this will increase inflation. I think f- inflation is not over yet. We'll see another wave of inflation. So uh, lot, lots to watch here. Eastern countries increasingly invest in gold and silver, diverging from Western nations reliant on debt. This trend suggests a potential shift in ownership toward Western powers. Turkey, for example, experienced a remarkable surge in silver imports, reaching $1.5 billion in 2022. The country's demand for silver predominantly stems from its renowned jewelry industry, celebrated for its intricate designs and craftsmanship. The spike in Turkey's silver imports is attributed to the rising popularity of silver jewelry domestically and internationally. India's silver imports totaled 422 billion Indian rupees in the financial year 2023, marking a significant increase from the previous year and representing the highest import value. Willem Middlecoop, the author of The Big Reset, underscores the substantial rise in physical demand from Eastern countries like India and Turkey. He contrasts this with ongoing manipulation in U.S. markets, particularly in silver prices through futures trading. Willem anticipates a potential shift in the price discovery mechanism, gradually moving from the west to the east. This transition might result in a divergence in pricing, potentially leading to higher prices originating from Shanghai and other eastern markets due to their surging physical demand. Global gold prices have reached record highs this month, continuing a year-end surge that could persist if the U.S. economy slows as anticipated, per the World Gold Council's report. On December 1st, Gold prices, based on futures contracts for December delivery, hit an all-time high of $2,071 per troy ounce and have experienced an increase in seven out of the past eight weeks. Year to date, there has been a 12% rise in gold prices. Willem, acknowledging the recent surge in gold prices, notes a significant undervaluation in equities, particularly within the commodities sector. Moreover, breakout patterns in various sectors indicate the beginning of an upward trend. As the tax loss selling season ends, he foresees significant gains in smaller firms, particularly if gold crosses the $2,080 to $2,100 mark. We will present clips from Willem Middlecoop's interview with Wall Street Silver. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. The supply and demand, there's a huge physical offtake uh, coming right. from the East. Uh, we see that the huge import numbers from India, from Turkey. But we all know uh, the paper games are still all being played, you know, selling right. down the silver price with selling futures on the US uh, markets. Right. Um, but uh, there's some interesting developments. Uh, I think the price discovery mechanism will slowly move from West to East. Uh, and, and this means that um, uh, we might get a bifurcation for the price. So we'll see maybe higher prices coming from Shanghai, from the east, especially because the physical demand is so large. So um, I always advise people, you know, just buy, just buy the dips in silver, buy the physical metal, because one day this market will start to run and it will run fast. Well, we've, we've seen part of that run already. Uh, gold is trading $200 higher than, uh, than, than a few weeks or a few months ago. Uh, but if you look at the equities, I'm a fund manager. We have an equity fund and commodity fund. So <clears throat> if I look at the valuations, uh, they're, uh, they're, it's dirt cheap. Right. Uh, we had a correction, which took almost 30 months. We had a previous high in the summer of 2020. And now we see many breakout patterns. We see it uh, in the ETFs, the GDX, the SIL, SILJ. So many breakout patterns also in the individual stocks. We see it with Newman Mining, which mm-hmm. is like the largest uh, uh, precious metals uh, listed uh, company. So I expect uh, a run for these stocks. Um, it already started. We are at the end of textile selling season, which means that all the smaller companies, which 
um, had seen all these losses are still sold down for people who want to 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 use the losses in their their uh, for for tax reasons. Right. And normally, normally you get a um, violent move upwards in in January, February, March. And it, especially when gold finally breaks this 2080, uh, 2100 level, I think uh, you can expect a, a very, very strong rally. And this rally will take longer than the previous ones. We had a very short recovery rally in 2016, right. a very short one in 2020. I expect this bull market to really start. Look at the dollar. The dollar has really been softening even today. I think that's the driver because uh, uh, the driver of the strong precious metal prices. Right. Uh, but but if we focus on the geopolitical side, one thing is certain: the BRICS countries, Russia, China, they do understand that the U.S. is a paper dollar system, and they do understand that they are a more commodity based system. They're working on a parallel trading system. They're working on their own. Um, um, I think their own currency and mm -hmm. whether that will be gold linked, gold backed, commodity based, uh, I don't know. But I always listen to what Zoltan Pozar said, uh, says. He used to be with Credit Suisse. He understands these dynamics very well. Mm -hmm. And he has been, um, well, he's on the record by saying we're witnessing the birth of Bretton Woods 3.0, a new monetary system coming from the East centered around commodity-based currencies, and I think wow. that's, that's spot on. Gold is often viewed as a safeguard against geopolitical uncertainties, as seen during the Israel-Gaza conflict when gold prices surged by 6% after the Hamas attacks on October 7th. However, recent developments indicate a decrease in the potential for a larger regional war, lessening the immediate impact on global markets. The ongoing tensions from the Israel-Hamas conflict have revived interest in gold as a safe haven asset. Despite historical trends of the U.S. resorting to war during such geopolitical turmoil, widespread global opposition to Western sanctions on Russia casts doubt on the feasibility of this strategy. With approximately 140 countries opposing these sanctions, there's skepticism about the U.S. and the West's willingness to engage in conflict with most of the world. Willem foresees a more intricate hybrid war, ruling out the likelihood of a third world war but expecting involvement of financial and economic elements, potentially involving commodities like gold and silver. Regarding digital currencies, Willem anticipates their widespread adoption due to governmental advantages. Central bank digital currencies will likely become mainstream despite European resistance to physical currency. However, he warns of potential risks associated with their adoption, particularly concerning individual freedoms. Let's get back to the interview. Well, going to war is the traditional game plan for the <laughs> U.S. <laughs> um, but but you, we shouldn't forget, you know, you have 140 countries out there who don't support the Western sanctions on, right. on Russia. So does the, does the U.S., does the West want to fight everybody in the world? <laughs> I, I don't think that's possible. Of course, we have, will have proxy wars like we have in uh, Ukraine now, like we have in Gaza now. Right. Uh, the world is getting very divided. It's like a new Cold War. Yeah. Uh, but I, I can't envision a third world war, everybody fighting. But I think it will more, it will be, we will see a more hybrid war developing where there's more of a financial economic war where gold and silver and other commodities will come into play. We've seen export bans for uh, coming from China for the rare earth. Mm -hmm. And I think this will move prices up. Uh, this will increase inflation. I think inflation is not over yet. We'll see another wave of inflation. So uh, lots lots to watch here. Uh, well, the U.S. is, is developing into uh, some kind of real-life joke, you know. Yeah. <laughs> how, yeah, how can seriously. Experience? How, can the, how can this country be the leader of the world? Yeah. So that I think that explains why so many countries, the 140 countries I mentioned, are not following the West, are not following the U.S. anymore. Um, U.S. Uh, isn't uh, their most um, uh, their largest trading partner anymore for most of these countries. China is their largest trading partner now. So they listen to the ambassador of China more than to the ambassador of the U.S. And I think that explains this dynamic. And and this goes for all countries in Middle America, all countries in Latin America, all countries in Africa, uh, all countries in the Middle East. So it's a numbers game. The West is 1.5 billion people. The rest of the world is 6 billion people. And the 6 billion people 
are leaning more towards the BRICS uh, club now than, than than the US club. So I think it's 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 impossible to stop uh, the introduction of digital currencies. <laughs> Too much to be gained <laughs> by the by our governments to to introduce them. Right. And also China has the same um, uses the same methods. Um, you can only hope, and here in, in Europe, there's quite strong uh, movement who says there should always be physical money uh, available as well. The, 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 even the German Bundesbank has uh, has been a a, a uh, proponent of, of of that strategy. But mm. I think you can't stop the central bank digital currency. But there's a huge risk because we might lose uh, quite a bit of freedom there. The evolving investment trends between East and West hint at a potential global shift in asset ownership. This shift in demand for physical commodities, particularly in gold and silver, suggests a changing dynamic in market influences. How might these diverging global trade patterns reshape future investment landscapes? Share your observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.